What is happening, everybody? All right, so I want to touch on a subject that I get asked a lot of, and that is camshafts. Now, most specifically, I got this question from Blackscaddy underscore 6.4 over at Instagram. What's up, brother? This one is for you. Uh, but I do get this question asked a lot, and you know that is either what are my thoughts on camming, either a 5.7 or a 6.4, what kind of gains can I get, what's the driving impression like, what kind of ET gains can I get. I get that a ton, and you know obviously, I'm going to say custom grind is the absolute best way to go. Right now, Pikes Performance Tunes does offer a custom grind camshaft package, but not getting into specific grinds or specific applications, what I want to do is I want to talk about the driving impressions, just driving a cammed car around. Because, well, quite frankly, uh, if you're coming into getting a cam for your car and you're expecting either huge numbers at the track or a big number on the dyno, well, that's fine. But none of that translates into how the car actually drives when you just get in the thing, start it, and take it somewhere. So just first and foremost, whether it's an off-the-shelf grind or a custom grind camshaft, there will always be compromises engineered into that unit that will take power away from somewhere and add it up top. Now, I get it. Everybody's got that friend, or maybe you have one yourself, and you're going to say, well, my cam or my friend's cam picked up power everywhere. That is very, very rare. Typically, when you replace a stock camshaft with a performance camshaft, you are taking power away from tip-in, idle quality, and low RPM torque, and you are transferring that power somewhere down the line, and it's usually in a bump in mid-range power and either an increase in your horsepower up top or and this is a key point, being able to carry what power you were making out farther in the RPM range. Say, for example, in a 6.4, instead of making peak power around 6,600, you're able to now carry that power out, yeah, maybe to 64, 6,500 RPM, somewhere in that range. So just understand that the driving characteristics are going to be very different for your camshaft that you're going to be installing in your car versus stock. And a lot of that has to do with duration, intake valve events, exhaust valve events, uh, lobe separation angle, all of that plays a role. So but let's get into the driving, just the normal driving characteristics. Typically when I drive a cammed car, there are several things that jump out at me about the driving experience that well, I'll be honest with you guys, that may not be necessarily favorable. The first thing that I notice is that the car will always seem a little bit lazy down low. And by the way, I'm not just speaking in hemi-specific terms here. This is a generality across all marks. Uh, but you're going to notice that the car is going to be a bit more lazy down low. Your tip-in throttle response is probably not going to be as good. Uh, you may notice a little bit more torque and horsepower as the car is accelerating through say 37, 3800 RPM when the cam really starts to become efficient, really comes on the pipe so to speak at about 4500 RPM and then will carry the power out farther. But that is not to say that it's going to completely pin you in the back of the seat and it's going to transform your worldview with just one whap of the throttle. It doesn't really work that way. And as a matter of fact, in many cases, the camshafts that show big numbers on a dyno and that actually do have improvements at the drag strip, well, I got to be honest, they're not too far different in terms of how they feel from the stock cam, especially as the car is revving past, say, 55, 5800 RPM. At that point, you're basically, and this is now specifically speaking about the 6.4, you're a little bit hemmed up by the limitations of the stock intake manifold. Uh, yes, you can actually make the car flow out to about 64, 6500 RPM, maybe a little bit more, but the reality is, is that you're simply carrying the power out farther. 
and that is not necessarily going to make the car feel faster, but it will make a bigger number on a dyno and it will run quicker in the quarter mile. So, you know, what is it that you're really looking for? Do you want real sharp, real crisp throttle response down low? Are you looking for a specific dyno number? Is that really the goal that you're after? Uh, is it an ET that you're shooting for or are you the type of guy that just wants your car to sound like it's got a cam? Well, in that case, that's not a problem, but that particular cam, the one that's gonna lope a lot with a lot of overlap, is going to be the most lazy down low. It's going to feel not as crisp as any of the other cams that are actually ground to make power. Now, off the shelf for custom, that's always another big deal. There are grinds that are out there that do very well. Comp 270 is one of them. Um, you, there's a there's an NSR grind that I like that's out there. MMX sells it. Uh, but here's the thing: uh, NSR meaning no spring required. By the way, there's no such thing as that in my book, and I'll get to that in just a second. But look, the reality is, if you go with a custom grind, you can tailor build this camshaft specifically for the end user's needs. Most off-the-shelf camshafts are going to be kind of a catch-all type of cam. And they're also going to, well, let's be honest, I mean, they're going to cater to somebody that is looking for yeah, the bigger is better mentality. More lift is better, right? Uh, more duration is better. That's not ever always the case. In fact, in many cases, that more is better mentality has gotten a lot of guys' hearts broken and has really frustrated uh, tuners over the years, mainly because you know, you're sold a bill of goods that is not necessarily going to ring true. So uh, in my opinion, yeah, there's some okay off the shelf cams, but I always would err on the side of caution, go with the custom grind cam and let the folks that do this for a living uh, tailor make something that is really going to be right for you. Now, um, one other thing to remember, and I want to get back into this, you know, no spring required cam or whatever. Look, if you're tearing your engine apart, especially for a Hemi, because the heads do have to come off, here's some things to consider. Do not go cheap on your valve train. Get a full set of Hellcat lifters. Don't just get the MDS delete kit. That's, no, don't do that. Get a full set of lifters. Get the upgraded push rods and put a set of upgraded springs in those heads. I cannot tell you how frustrating that it is when somebody wants to try to do one of these cam swaps on the cheap, so to speak. You're already paying for the labor. It just dish out the few extra bones that it's going to take to put the right components in your engine so that you are not frustrated by failure whether it's a lifter or a push rod or you've got a tired set of valve springs in your head and you run into issues potentially with valve flow. Just spend the extra money, get the right components in your car so that your combination will be fit for the abuse that you plan on putting it through. So, uh, but anyway, let me get off my soapbox again, talk about the cam cars. Look, guys, I got to tell you, uh, there is... Again, a limiting factor here, and that is going to be your stock intake manifold. There's really only so much that that piece can do, and unfortunately, the aftermarket really doesn't hand us a whole lot to work with. I, let's be honest. The um, Edelbrock intake manifold for the Hemis is the only one that we've got to work with, and yeah, it flows really well, but damn, that thing is heavy. And it's heavy because it's made out of metal as opposed to the polymer. And that metal heat soaks like you would not believe. So, uh, you know, it's it's just so frustrating. You know, the aftermarket really isn't taking to the Hemis very well. well and for good reason. And I'll, but without getting into that in general, uh, the Hemis do very well with the stock components. A very well ported intake manifold. Um... A good custom grind cam that's engineered and put together more for throttle response, for mid-range power, and working within the confines of the intake manifold itself will yield you much better results overall, and that is 
taking into account drivability and how it makes you feel when you drive it than going after peak numbers. So at any rate, wanted to shoot this out there for you. Got any questions or comments, leave them in the boxes below, and y'all have a great one. Adios.